It's an exceptional honor. Um, ever since I was little, when I was watching, you know, FTV, watching the Louis Vuitton shows and the Givenchy shows and the Dior shows, I've always just been so fascinated by this world. And, you know, LVMH owns all those brands that I've ever looked up to. So to be recognized by the conglomerate in this way feels like it's not only an honor, but it also feels like a full circle moment from growing up watching those designers housed by LVMH to being part of them in a way. The motivation coming from Khalishio, yeah. finishing off your matric year in Kimberley at Christian Brothers College. Mm. Where does it, all of that come from? I think a supportive like family structure. Um, my mother always wanted me to pursue whatever I wanted to do. So when she started seeing me do sketches and you know fashion related things here and here and there she says she could tell that i was going to go into fashion and she ensured that i practiced every day and sketched um every day and you know that sort of teaches you discipline from from a very young age you know i think which is also a testament to just parents allowing their 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 children to do what they want because they'll not feel like they're working, you know, for, for what they do. Um, it'll just be part of their, their lives, like that just inherent drive because they've been sort of taught and supported to do it from, from, from a young age. I think that's where the passion for me, for me comes from, just that freedom to have done it, you know? And freedom to express yeah. your talents at a global level. The mere fact that through the mentorship, you'll keep on rubbing shoulders. You've already done that with the competition. You've already done it with uh, the London Fashion Week. Mm. What does it say to the brand Teba Magugu? Yeah, you know, it's, it's really incredible making these connections because as much as I, it's my personal mission to stay in South Africa and, you know, manufacture and produce um, from here, we're still faced with quite unique challenges. And I think that's where LVMH can really step and, you know, not only the contacts I've made, but LVMH as a company can really step in and help me around issues around sourcing, intellectual property, um, planning and, and shipping, which is something in particular that I really struggle with in my business. Um, I was telling them, I think the reason why people don't actually hear of a lot of South African designers, because, you know, the, the talent is definitely there. They are exceptional people, not only in fashion, but across so many other other disciplines but you know the problem especially in fashion is us getting the product out so it's not the people who fail us because this the, the talent is there but it's the systems yeah. put in place and essentially the infrastructure yeah. that really cuts people off mm -hmm. from 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 exporting and gain, gaining that visi gaining that visibility and, and, and looking at it from that particular perspective you're talking logistics you're talking infrastructure you've been the guest of honor for the MEC Economic Development and Tourism Maruping Lekweni mm. in um, the fact that today you were able to get back to your hometown, Kimberley. Yeah. When you look at the question, the question that you're also quite passionate about is addressing youth unemployment. Mm. How does that link when you look at what we still need to put in place? Mm. Um, and I'm sure you, you, Kimberley keeps on coming to your mind, the Northern Cape keeps coming to mind. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, and I can only look at at, at fashion, you know, as one of the things that I feel can address so many, um, so many of the, so much of the unemployment that's happening. Like if you look at France, Europe in general, or, or America, fashion in general is like a multi-trillion dollar industry, you know what I mean? And it, it's done so much to stimulate the economies of those respective places. And I really feel like it's an industry that is so unexplored here, you know, that if, we give it the proper attention and the proper infrastructure, machinery and opportunities mm -hmm. that it can really have such an, a massive impact on our economy. That's why it was really great to hear in today's speech that they are willing to, they have to pay more attention to, to sm small to medium enterprise um, businesses mm -hmm. um, and really focus on, on, on creative areas because it's really not just a passion project you know mm -hmm. i think people when they hear of creative industries they think we just uh, play and faff around all day but it has the potential to have a very serious impact on our economy and general gdp right. yeah and then on your part maybe just to round it off have you started pinching yourself or oh, when did that moment happen it hasn't happened yet i i haven't woken up from this from this from this dream i was telling someone earlier <laughs> on that 
people around me are like celebrating and crying and I can't really get into that because part of me still feels like I'm about to wake up and, and realize that it really didn't happen, you know. Um, but yeah, so it hasn't really kicked in yet for me. And then somebody like myself, will I be able to afford Tebe Magugu um, for my better half? Yeah. <laughs> so the thing with my ready to wear that the, the, there's high pricing and then there's low pricing. There's more accessible mm -hmm. pieces um, women can sort of um, buy into. And then there's the more, the more sort of handcrafted, handcrafted ready to wear um, pieces where like there's such a level of workmanship that goes into it it has to you know be expensive I work across so many artists when I use collaborations for prints or you know there's a fascinating lady that I'm working with right now who took mud from Lesotho and mm. painted it on my garment added a few chemicals to it and then put it in the oven so that the, it doesn't wash off as as dirt it's things like it's it's craftsmanship and like creativity like mm. that you know mm. that would push up the pricing, but you're getting something that you can't get anywhere else. And that's know. exactly what makes you to say it's not that easy to leave Africa and go and settle in, in Europe because your inspiration comes from exactly where you're at. Exactly, exactly. Um, I, I can't imagine uh, being based elsewhere when all my inspiration and my cultural touch points are here in, in South Africa. Beautiful. Yeah. And then for a Northern Cape youth, for a youth of college level youth in of this entire province, um, country as a whole, Africa as a whole. Mm. Final word from Tebe Mangu. Hmm. If there's if there's one thing I'll say, I think it's just having conviction in in in, in what you do, and I think that essentially just connects to never giving up. There have been so many low points for me. You know, I never had it easy, and fashion is such a tough industry. It's, it's such a tough. Um, industry that just having that passion and conviction for you, you know, to get you through all those hardships, I think, is what will get you to wherever you need you need to be. Great. Yeah. Congratulations once again. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you so much. Thank you.